What's going on everyone? Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders Awakened. One thing is 100% for certain, and that is no Dungeon Defenders game ever has ever been accused of not being grindy enough. These are just some grindy games, and whether you hate it or you love it, that is one thing that is a definite about Dungeon Defenders in any of its games in its franchise. Now, experience and leveling in Dungeon Defenders Awakened is no different. So let's hop in and take a detailed look on XP, leveling, and how it all works in the definitive XP guide for Dungeon Defenders Awakened. Now, as I mentioned, Dungeon Defenders Awakened can just be quite a grind to level up. Uh, it follows the same experience type pattern that Dungeon Defenders, the original game, did, wherein you level from 1 to 70 at a relatively decent pace, and then you hit a hard wall at 70, and it requires more and more experience to keep continuing up from that point. In fact, it takes the same amount of experience just to go from level 99 to 100 as it does to go all the way from level 1 all the way up to level 79. Now, it's important to note exactly how experience is split in your hero deck. In this particular example, I've got one character that can earn experience in the deck. Now, say I'm doing a map that offers 10,000 experience. At the end of the map, I'm going to get 10,000 experience for the one hero here. Now, if I had a second hero in the deck that needed experience as well, and I did the same map, instead of getting 10,000, I will get 20,000. So experience is not split, it is additive, depending on how many heroes you have in your deck that still can earn experience. Uh, of course, if you're leveling up, you always want to keep your deck full. You always want to keep your deck full of characters that still need XP if you're in the mix where you have some level 100s and some that are not. Now, there's a few important milestones for XP in Dungeon Defenders Awakened, and the very first one is going to be hitting level 60. By getting to level 60, you're going to be able to equip the uh, legendary gear you're going to find in Insane Mode, and in addition to that, you're going to be able to upgrade your defenses all the way to their maximum. Now, this is going to allow you to push farther than anything else in the game, really, just having the ability to upgrade your defenses all the way up to the top. The next milestone you're going to want to get to is going to be level 70. Level 70 is going to unlock Nightmare Mode, and it's going to allow you to start equipping the entry-level mythical gear that you will start finding in Nightmare Mode. So, level 70 is milestone number 2 that you really need to be shooting for. Now, next up, we're going to skip 78 and go right to 83, as 83 is a major milestone because that is where you unlock Massacre gear. Now, Massacre gear is going to require Massacre Mode, which means you have to be level 83 to hop into those maps. So level 83 is an important milestone to get to, that way you can start earning the godly gear that is available in the game. And then the final two milestones uh, is level 90. Now level 90, you're at a point where you can equip any piece of gear in the game. So nothing that's going to drop anywhere in the game that you can't equip. And then of course level 100, which is the max level. Now, depending on where you are at in your journey depends on where you would want to level, but one thing is true throughout each and every tier of difficulty, and that is the best XP per hour is going to be in survival. Now, not only be in survival, but it's going to be for completing survival. So ideally, in each tier, starting in Insane, you are going to want to be able to complete survival maps. Now, with that in mind, you are also going to want to be able to complete Act 3 survival maps, as the best experience is going to be in the late waves, and the best start in survival is going to be from Wave 20. 
Now people are going to say, what? What do you mean? What's wrong with wave 23? And wave 23 is where you want to start once you don't care about experience and you're just grinding for loot. However, level 20 or wave 20 starts are going to offer you the most experience per hour. Now when it comes to survival, of course, just like getting a loot bonus, you also get an XP bonus for doing mix mode. So if you can, always do mix mode, always do hardcore, and then always be in a group if you have a group that can complete the maps in a timely manner. Now say you can't do survival mode, what do you do next? I'm not quite to that point in the game. I'm in insane mode, I'm trying to get to level 60, I'm just climbing up. Well, your go-to is going to be the highest difficulty campaign map. Ideally, you would want to do the summit on campaign if you are unable to clear any survival maps at all. Now, the summit, for example, on campaign in insane mode in 10 minutes is going to give you about 211,000 XP per hero that can earn XP in your deck. Now, this is going to change quite a bit. That was based off of just solo play without hitting all of the bonuses throughout. Uh, however, you can count on getting yourself about 210, 211,000 XP per hero every single time you do Summit Campaign on Insane Mode. Now, Royal Gardens is a heavily farmed map in Massacre, so I did all of the rest of the comparisons based off of Royal Gardens. Now, in Royal Gardens, for example, in regular survival mode with a Wave 20 start, you're going to earn about 1.2 million XP in, I put it here at 25 minutes. Now, the reason I did that is one of the benefits of doing the longer survival matches is the Netflix and chill factor. So I went through and I did all of the maps to check the XP on full on AFK Netflix mode. Uh, in fact, there was a couple of times where I actually forgot what I was doing and let it sit for way too many minutes in between waves. However, at 1.2 million every 25 minutes, that is absurdly slow. Uh, by actually playing the game, you're going to get it done much, much quicker than that. However, even in Netflix and chill mode, 1.2 mil every 25 minutes is going to be much better than 211,000 every 10 minutes. So your XP per hour is going to be much higher in survival mode. Now looking at insane mode as well, and looking at mix mode. Mix mode is going to take about the same time as a regular survival. However, here on Royal Gardens, you're going to get about 1.4 million per hero that can earn XP in your deck for doing an insane hardcore mix mode Royal Gardens map. Now, if you're unable to do any of these and you're unable to do a campaign summit kill, then maybe take a look at the challenge maps as doing the campaign, or pardon me, as far as doing the challenge on say the summit, there's not gonna be a boss at the end. It's gonna be a much easier clear and it's not going to be anywhere near as much XP. However, it's going to give you an easier time through. So if you're unable to clear a survival or a mix mode and you're in insane gear, you're going to want to just do the highest difficulty campaign map that you can clear quickly. Now you hit level 70 and you're moving on up to Nightmare. Well, it's no different there, and that is survival is just going to give you much more XP per hour in nightmare mode as well. Uh, doing a summit campaign on nightmare is going to take you under 10 minutes. You're going to get about 1.7 million XP per hero that's in your deck that can earn XP. Uh, doing that same Royal Guard survival on nightmare, uh, it's going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes normally. Uh, this is the one I actually snoozed on and forgot what I was doing. However, you're going to earn about, in this example, over 9 million XP in 30 minutes, which of course is just way, way better XP per hour than 1.7 mil every 10 minutes. So not only are you getting better gear, but you're also getting the most possible XP. Now, if we bump that up to mix mode in Nightmare, you're going to be running the same one in about 19 minutes. Uh, you're going to get about 11 and a half, 11.6 million XP per hero that can earn XP in mix mode. Now, just as an example there, wave 20 starts are always the way to go for wave, for XP earning. 
However, if you did that same Nightmare Hardcore Mix Mode and started at Wave 23, you're going to earn about 6.8 mil, and it's going to take you about 12 minutes to get the run done. Now, once you hit level 90, I personally would suggest just ignoring the XP altogether. Uh, we all know that not only is it a big grind with experience, it is a massive grind with loot as well. Once you get to level 90, you can equip any loot in the game, so I personally would suggest going right to those Wave 23 starts and get that loot farm started, as it's all about the loot. And there is no doubt if you want to min-max in Dungeon Defenders Awakened, you are going to be at level 100 across the board long before you get all of that perfect loot. So hopefully this helps answer some questions. The full TLDW would be do survivals you can complete. If you can't complete survivals, do the highest level campaign map you can in the tier and ideally you do the summit which gets that boss bonus for boss XP. If you're not capable of doing any of these, then check out the challenge modes, but just stick to the highest level campaign map you can do. However, you're going to want to get to clearance survivals as soon as you can, and then taking it one step further and going up to mix mode survivals on hardcore in whichever tier you are in. So hopefully this helps answer some questions about experience and leveling in Dungeon Defenders Awakened. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to let me know down below and make sure to share your little tips that you like to use for leveling heroes in Dungeon Defenders Awakened. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to click that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders in all of its flavors, shapes, and forms. Thanks again, y'all. I will see you next time around. Take it easy.